My dear friend, I wish you a very happy Easter from my family to your family. I would like you to be in prayer with me right now. Allow me to speak for you. I am an Easter person. I am not confined by crucifixion, but defined by resurrection. I have a spiritual experience of Easter through God rising up in my every thought. I know the God best is ahead of me individually and throughout my family and friends and all the people I know as a body of believers. With the spring of renewal of life, I have a spiritual experience of expanded positive living. Through the risen Christ, I am gifted with the God vision to see the good in all, and I am thankful. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. I have a question for you. Why did Jesus fold the napkin? Why did Jesus fold the linen burial cloth after his resurrection? The Gospel of John 20, verse 7, tells us that the napkin, which was placed over the face of Jesus, was not just thrown aside like the grave clothes. The Bible takes an entire verse to tell us that the napkin was neatly folded and was placed at the head of that stony coffin. Early Sunday morning, while it was dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb to see. The other disciple outran Peter and got there first. He stooped and looked in, and he saw the linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. And then Simon Peter arrived and went. Is that important? Absolutely. It is really significant. In order to understand the significance of the folded napkin, you have to understand a little bit about Hebrew tradition of that day. The folded napkin had to do with the master and servant of every Jewish, that every Jewish boy knew. The table was furnished perfectly, and then the servant would wait just out of sight until the master had finished eating, and then the servant would not dare touch the table until the master was finished. Now, if the master was done eating, he would rise from the table, wipe his fingers and mouth with the napkin, and toss it on the table. The servant would then know to clear the table, for in those days the wadded napkin meant, I'm done. But if the master got up from the table and folded his napkin, and the folded napkin meant something, it meant this. Wait a minute, I'm coming back. Matthew 28, verses 1 through 7, the Bible says, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. For the fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. 
and then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee, and you will see him there. Positive Christianity celebrates the life, the teachings, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We do not dwell on people's desire to inflict cruel punishment which led to his death. Humans often try to crucify the divine because often we don't understand. And we have tried to entomb God's splendor since the beginning of the time, but try as we may, we never succeed for long. I have thought about this for some time, and I have come to some conclusions as to why we, as humankind, have the desire to destroy its hope. Darkness will always try to destroy a light because if it did not, the darkness would cease to exist. The low is suspicious of the high, and the human is suspicious of the divine. Humankind's fear has always been, if I let God truly express through me, where will I be? The truth is that we do not cease to exist when God comes through us completely. No, we come into our own. A turned-off lamp doesn't cease to exist, but sits stagnant, waiting to fulfill its potential. When it's illumined, it becomes what it is meant to be. All of us have had personal crucifixions, both from others and, let's be honest, from ourselves. But we are defined by our resurrections. When we're brave enough to crucify our lower error thoughts within us, we will find not death, but new life. We must crucify human thoughts of death, of sickness, of lack, disharmony, and limitation. We do not do this when we find ourselves in a self-imposed tomb that we have built around our thoughts, thought by thought, thinking that it protects us. Just at that point when the biggest stone is rolled into place over what to our physical eyes looks like our only way out, we call upon the Christ. And there's a great earthquake, a quake in the earthly. An angel A divine idea of God rolls back the blockage to our God-given good. A divine idea will overpower and sit on the blockage. Nothing can ever overpower the divine. Divine ideas are perfection. Their appearance is like light, and their essence white as snow. It's always pure. It's always perfect for us and for everyone. Divine ideas meet us at our point of need. The guards, the small negative thoughts in us that keep defending themselves, tell us to worry, to have fear, to have doubt, to have anxiety and dismay. But faced with God's truth, They themselves will have great fear and tremble and become like dead men. Darkness always ceases to be as the light comes. God will speak inside of you. God will say to you, do not be afraid. You are no longer in the tomb. You have risen. Come and see where the limitation used to be. In manifestation, it is no longer there. By your example, you will automatically share with others in the world who are locked in their tombs of their own lack and their own limitation. 
others will look to you because you are resurrected from the walking dead. And there is a new and a joyous splendor shining forth from within you. Daily you walk towards Galilee, where Jesus has gone before us. Galilee, it spiritually symbolizes a higher consciousness of life. And now, join me in prayer. I pray this Easter that you have a personal resurrection in your life at the point of your need. No matter how great your challenge, God is greater. God has a perfect idea for you and for your need. God has a perfect way for you to travel. You can travel unharmed. God is paving your way before you. God is busy bringing your good to you from the endless wellspring that flows directly from God to you. God is your perfect health. God is your perfect prosperity. God is your answer. And you will experience a resurrection in your life and in the circumstances of your life. Quiet your doubting mind and allow the Christ to come forth. These things are decreed in prayer for you in the nature of the resurrected Jesus Christ whom we follow. Amen.